graph of a rational function. Okay? So, humbly graph of a rational function. Okay. So, for example, f of x is equal to 2x plus 5 over x minus 1. Okay. Our main goal again for today is to, to graph a rational function and to determine what's the domain and range of that particular function. Okay. So for example, number one, f of x is equal to 2x plus 5 over x minus 2. Okay. First, we need to the, uh, determine the uh, x-intercept. Okay. Miss, what do you mean by x-intercept? When we say x-intercept, you are referring to the zeros of your numerator. Okay. Zeros of your numerator. So what do you mean by zeros of numerator? What do you mean by that? What is zeros of numerator? You're referring to the value of, of x in your numerator. Okay? So how do we do that? So 2x plus 5 equals 0. So what's the value of x in that particular? What's the value of x? Okay, negative 5 halves. So therefore, your ordered pair will be negative 5 halves and then 0. Okay? Negative 5 halves and then 0. Because it means that in getting the zeros of the numerator, it means that zero that y is equal to zero. So y equals to two x plus five. So zero equals to two x plus five. So that's the meaning of y x intercept. X intercept, you are referring to the zeros of your numerator. Okay? Meaning the value of x. Okay, the value of x. So that, that's uh, x intercept. Okay, so we're done with that. Next is y intercept. Okay? What about y intercept? When we say y intercept, meaning if x is zero, what is the value of y? If x is zero, what is the value of y? That's y intercept. If x is zero, what is the value of y? So to solve for the, to solve for y, y is equal to two x plus five over x minus one. So substitute. So that will become two multiplied by zero plus five over zero minus one. So therefore, what is the value of y based on this? What is the value of y? Okay, negative five. So therefore, your ordered pair is zero and negative five. Okay, zero and negative five. Again, for the x intercept. So we have negative 5 halves and then 0. And then y intercept, we have 0 and negative 5. Okay, we need that to, to uh, sketch the graph. Okay, so we're done with intercepts. Okay, so we're done with x intercept and then y intercept. The next one is the uh, vertical. What's the question? Yes, when we have y intercept, that on x is equal to 0. Okay, if we're talking about y intercept, Letting x equals to zero. Okay, is it clear? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're done with intercepts. So the next is vertical asymptote. When we say asymptote, okay, it will not touch that particular point. It will not touch that particular point. So vertical asymptote. How do we determine the vertical asymptote? So to determine the vertical asymptote, who's Waki? You know him? You know Waki? Okay. Okay. So vertical asymptote, to determine the vertical asymptote, you need to get the uh, zeros of your denominator. Okay? Vertical asymptote, you need to get the zeros of your denominator. So your denominator here is x minus 1. Okay? So we need to get the zeros of this one. So x minus 1. Vertical asymptote, again, let me say that, you are referring to the zeros of your denominator. Okay? Zeros of your denominator. That's a vertical asymptote. So in here, what is your vertical asymptote? Okay, 1. So your vertical asymptote is 1. Now, what about horizontal asymptote? Okay, what about horizontal asymptote? So your vertical asymptote is 1, okay? How do we get that? To your denominator, by getting the zeros of your denominator. And then what about horizontal asymptote? Yes, how do we determine the horizontal asymptote? There are two, there are three uh, conditions, okay? In getting the horizontal asymptote. So the first one is m less than n. The second is m equals n. The third is m greater than n. Yes, what do you mean by that one? So when we say m and n, you are referring to the degree okay, of your numerator and your denominator. When we say m, you are referring to the degree or to the exponent of your numerator. When we say n, you are referring to the, de to the degree of your denominator. Okay? So in this particular example, what is the degree of your numerator? Meaning you're talking about the exponent of the variable. So what is the degree of your numerator? Okay, 1. Okay, that, that is your m. And then when we say n, when we say n, you are referring to the exponent or degree of the uh, denominator. Okay, we're talking about the uh, exponent of the variable. So what is your n here? One also. Okay. So in which condition? 
that the example applies. What particular? Okay, second condition. Okay? So, the, in the given example, uh, it applies the second condition. Meaning, the degree or the exponent of the variable in the numerator is the same as the degree or the exponent of the variable in the denominator. So, we, it applies the second condition. M equals N. Okay? Now, if the first condition says that M is less than or smaller than N, your horizontal asymptote is always zero. Constant yun, okay? If M is less than N, your horizontal asymptote is always equal to zero. Okay? Now, for the second condition, if M is equal to N, your horizontal asymptote will be A over B. Miss! What do we mean by A over B? When we say A, you are referring to the uh, leading coefficient of your numerator. And then B, you are referring to the leading coefficient of your denominator. So in this particular, you said that this example applies the uh, second condition, which is M equals N. Therefore, what is your horizontal asymptote? You said that in this example, it applies the second condition, that M equals N. So therefore, what is your horizontal asymptote in this particular example? Hmm? One. Okay, two. How do you get two? That's correct. Your horizontal asymptote is two. How do you get two? What is the, uh, okay, very good. The uh, leading coefficient of your numerator, which is your A, is two, okay, your leading coefficient, divided by the leading coefficient of your denominator, which is your B. And the leading coefficient of X? One. So therefore, your horizontal asymptote is two. Okay? That's equal to two. Yes, or? Uh, horizontal asymptote is equal to zero if the degree of your numerator is smaller than is smaller than the degree of your denominator. When we say degree, you are talking to the uh, exponent of the variable. Okay? Your exponent. Yes. If m is less than n, it is a non, the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. Your horizontal asymptote is equal to zero. Okay? If the if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of your denominator, your horizontal asymptote is the uh, quotient, the uh, quotient of the leading coefficient of your numerator and the leading coefficient of your denominator. Meaning, you need to divide the leading coefficient of your numerator by the leading coefficient of your denominator. If and only if their degrees or exponent are the same. Okay? Kapag greater than naman, that's a third condition, there is no horizontal asymptote. What we call it is the slant or oblique okay, asymptote. Okay? So the slant or oblique asymptote. So the graph is not horizontal, it should be slant. If the, uh, if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator. Okay? So you need to familiarize yourself with the three conditions okay? in getting the, the uh, horizontal asymptote. Okay? So again, vertical asymptote. How do we get the vertical asymptote? You need to get the zeros of your denominator. So you do have one. And then to determine the horizontal asymptote, you need to examine the uh, degrees of your numerator and your denominator. Okay? So in here, they have the same degree, which is 1. So we need to apply the second condition. M equals N. So therefore, your horizontal asymptote is 2. 2 here is the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of your denominator, which is 1. So therefore, your horizontal asymptote is 2. Okay? So we're done with that. Next. So since you already have vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote, you can now determine the domain and range. Okay? Since you already have vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. The question is, Miss, how do we determine the domain and range? For domain, focus on the vertical asymptote. For the range, horizontal asymptote. Meaning, all set of real numbers are possible except, except what? Except what? Okay, except 1. Okay? All real numbers are possible except 1. So your domain will be negative infinity to 1, parenthesis, meaning 1 is not included, union with 1 to positive infinity. Okay? Negative infinity to 1, union with 1 to positive infinity. What about the range? Okay, what about the range? So your horizontal asymptote is 2. It means that all set of real numbers are possible except what? Except what? Okay, except 2. So meaning your range will be negative infinity to 2 union with 
2 to positive infinity. Okay? Negative infinity to 2, union with 2 to positive infinity. So that's the domain and range of a rational function. Okay? So in determining the domain, vertical asymptote. All real numbers except 1. And then to determine the range, horizontal asymptote. Okay? All real numbers except 1. Okay. So how do we graph that? So let's try to graph that. First, the uh, vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote, which is 1. So that's the vertical asymptote. Okay, next. Next is horizontal asymptote. 2. 1, 2. So these are the points that's not possible. Okay? So vertical asymptote, the red line, and then we do have horizontal asymptote, the blue line. Okay? Now, plot the intercept. So we have negative 5 halves at 0. So negative 5 halves 0. So we have 1, 2. So negative 5 halves, that is between negative 2 and negative 3. So here. Okay. And then we have 0, negative 5. So negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So the graph of this particular function is like this. Something like that. Okay. It will not touch the uh, asymptote. And then the other one is this one. That's the graph. So that's the graph of this example. To determine the other points, you can use the table values. Just to be specific, okay? You can use any numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. You can use any numbers except with the uh, vertical asymptote, okay? Except one. Any numbers for x, okay? For x value, any numbers except the uh, vertical asymptote. Just to plot it uh, accurately, okay? You can have it in a, using a table values. Okay? Kahit mga uh, three for negative and then three ne uh, three negative numbers and then three positive numbers, just to be accurate. So that's how we we graph a rational function. Okay? Any more question? This one? I, oh, this one is only uh, I don't know, an example. Okay? So to, to plot this, yung accurately, you need to assign numbers of x, any values of x, just to plot it accurately. Okay? But the graph is like, look, looks like this. It looks like this. Okay? Another example, just to show what the, what's the graph looks like. So like this. Okay? So to, to, to graph that in an accurate or specific manner, you need to assign values of x. Any values of x or any numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, it's up to you. Okay? Except, except the vertical line. Lahat possible except the vertical asymptote. So, pwedeng negative 8, negative 10, positive 4, positive 5, except the vertical asymptote. That's only the uh, condition. Okay? So, the graph is looked like this one. Another example. So, that's the first example. Another example. F of x equals... 1 over x minus 1, okay? f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1. Okay, x-intercept. What is your x-intercept? What do you mean by x-intercept? What is x-intercept? Okay, zeros of the numerator. In this particular example, do we have an x-intercept? Okay, no, you don't have it. Why is it? That's correct. There's no x-intercept. Because there's, precisely, because there's no x in the numerator. Okay, next. Y-intercept. What is y-intercept? How do you get 1? Is it 1? To determine the y-intercept, if x is 0, what is the value of, what is the value of y? If x is 0, and the value of y, it means that y equals to 1 over 0 minus 1. So y is equal to negative 1. Okay? So therefore, you do have y-intercept, okay, which is 0, negative 1. Okay? Next. What's next? After y-intercept? Vertical asymptote. Okay. So how do we solve for the vertical asymptote? How do we determine the vertical asymptote? Okay, get the zeros of the denominator. So your vertical asymptote is equal to what? Okay, 1. Okay. So 1. Next, horizontal asymptote. There are three conditions. Try to examine the given. Try to examine the given. There are three conditions in determining the horizontal asymptote. So examine the given. Is it the first condition, second condition, or third condition? Oh, second condition. Are they the same? Okay, first condition, why is it? Why is it? Oh, 
Okay. Because the uh, degree, the degree of the numerator is less than to the degree of the denominator. Obviously, there's no x in the numerator. So zero, right? So meaning, mas less than yung degree ng numerator compared to the denominator. Okay? So that's the first condition. So therefore, what is your horizontal asymptote if the degree of the numerator is less than to, your, to the degree of your denominator? What's the horizontal? Okay, very good. Zero, as always. Zero. Okay? So we already have vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. You can now determine the domain and range of the function. So what would be the domain and range of the function? So what's the domain based on this? Okay, negative infinity to 1. Yan yan. Okay, to positive infinity. So you need to put parentheses because it's not included. Okay, what about the range? What about the range? Okay. Okay, positive infinity. Okay, is it clear? Okay. So we can now graph it. To have a specific or exact graph, you can come up with table values. Okay? Any numbers are possible. So it's up to you now. Okay, first, we need to plot the vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote. So 1. So this is your 1. Yeah. So it's your vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. Next is horizontal asymptote. 0. This one. So that's your horizontal asymptote. Okay? Next, y intercept. 0, negative 1. Yeah. So more or less, the graph is like this. Yeah. It will not touch as the uh, vertical and then horizontal asymptote. Okay? It will not touch as the uh, vertical, this one, red line, and then the horizontal asymptote. Okay? Something like that. But to be accurate, you need to do the table values. Any numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, you can use all those numbers, except, except a particular number. And what will be that number? Ano lang hindi pwede sa x? Ano lang hindi pwede? Ano lang hindi pwede sa x? Lahat pwede gamitin except what particular number? Okay, except 1. Okay? So lahat pwede. Pwede 2, pwede 3, pwede negative 8, pwede negative 10. It's up to you. Okay? It's up to you. Okay? Except 1. Hindi pwede si 1. Because that's a vertical asymptote. Okay? It won't touch the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. So that is how do we graph a rational Okay. Is it clear, people? Okay. Let's proceed to the last example. Okay. What if there's a hole? How do we plot that? Let's say the given example is f of x is equal to x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. Okay. x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. If you have noticed, the degree of the uh, the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. So more or less, you, you do an idea what is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, mas mababa, mas maliit yung exponent ng numerator compared to the denominator. So more or less, you do have an idea what will be the uh, horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote is what? What's the horizontal asymptote in that matter? What is the horizontal asymptote? Try to examine yung degrees. Try to examine the degrees. And then base it to the three conditions I gave. Ano ba yung condition? Is it in the first condition? Second condition? Okay, first condition. Ano yung first condition? What's the first condition? Okay, each A equals to zero. Why is it? Why is it your horizontal asymptote is equal to zero? Okay. The uh, degree of the numerator is one. Yun. And then the degree of the denominator is 2. So meaning, 1 is less than 2. 1 is less than 2. So that's the first condition. If if the degree of the numerator is less than, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, your HA or your horizontal asymptote is 0. Okay, try, try, try to uh, familiarize with the three conditions. Okay? okay, so how do we graph this? How do we graph this one? So first, you need to simplify. Okay? What have you noticed regarding your denominator? x squared minus 4. Is it factorable? Okay, yes. So we need to factor it. So this will become x minus 2 over x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay? And then what have you noticed after you factor? What have you noticed after you factor? Okay. Yes. Very good. So there are two x minus 2, so you need to cancel it. Okay? You need to cancel it. So if you simplify that, you will be having 1 over x plus 2. Okay? 1 over x plus 2. Now, if there is a cancellation 
meaning there is a hole. Okay? If there is a cancellation, if we apply cancellation, meaning there is a hole. Means what do you mean by that one? I will explain further. Okay? So going back. So after we cancel it, this is now your rational function. 1 over x plus 2. Okay? After we cancel it. But there is a hole. Okay? So what is your hole? Your hole is 2. This one. And you cancel it. So, I think cancel. So, I think my hole, which is 2. Okay? The hole is 2. How do you get 2? x minus 2 equals 0. So, x plus 2. Okay? Can follow? Can follow? Okay. So, you do have a hole, which is 2. Meaning, my butas, which is 2. Okay? So, if x is 2, okay? if x is 2, if the hole is 2, what is your y? Based on this. What is your y? If the hole is 2, which is your x, if x is 2, what is your y? Okay, one fourth. Okay, one fourth. Why do we need to get that? To determine what is where is the exact hole of that particular graph. Okay. Now let's proceed now. So from here, one over n. Substitute x. If x is two, here. Okay. So we can now determine the uh, x-intercept. What's the x-intercept? X-intercept. After we simplify, and then you come up with one over x plus two. So we can now graph this function, okay, and then, and then new function after we simplify it. So what is your x-intercept? So if x is 0, so y equals to 1 half, okay? So you have 0 and 1 half, okay? Next, what is your vertical asymptote? What is your vertical asymptote in this particular? What is your vertical asymptote? What is your vertical asymptote here? Negative 2. Okay, next, horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, based on this. Recall the three conditions. Any horizontal asymptote? Okay, zero. Next, domain and range. What's the domain and range? Mm. Okay. Okay, range. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But how do we plot that? How do we plot that? How do we sketch that? So first, vertical and horizontal asymptote. So we need to plot the vertical asymptote. So one, two, so we have negative two. So it's a vertical asymptote. And then we do have horizontal asymptote, which is zero. Okay. And then we do have zero and one half, which is your y intercept. Zero and one half. So when we say zero and one half, it's between one and zero, right? Zero and one half. Okay. Now, there's a hole. Where is it? Two and one fourth. Two and one fourth. So we have one, two, so one fourth, it means that it's between one and zero. Okay. okay. So what will be your graph? Your graph must be between the vertical asymptote and then horizontal asymptote. So then do you graph? So this will be your graph. Something like this. Okay. Oops. Okay, meaning this point it's not included. Okay? It's not continuous because there's a hole. What about the other graph? So the other graph is also between the vertical axis and then the horizontal axis. So more or less here. Yeah. That's the graph. It will never touch just the horizontal and the vertical axis. So that is the graph of this particular function. Okay? We can have a hole if and only if we apply cancellations. Doon lang nagkakaroon ng butas. Doon lang nagkakaroon ng hole kapag may cancellation. Okay? It means that that particular point, it's not included. It's not included in the solution. Okay? That particular point. So we're having a hole if we apply cancellation. So you know, that's it. Any more question? Can we proceed now to piecewise function? That's all right. So any more question? How do we how do we graph rational function before we proceed to piecewise function? My question, Baba. Any more question? Is it clear? Can you hear me? Can you see me? My question, pa. Before we proceed to piecewise. Ah, uh, for example. Something like this. Something like that. Okay, so enter use that. Something like that. So the graph is like this one. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. So that's a that's the slant asymptote. Okay. So your asymptote is slant. If the given is if the degree of the denominator is higher, like if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, your graph is like that. In a slant.
So for example, let's say this one. X squared minus 16 over X minus 3. Okay? So that is F of X. Although there's no slant naman in the piece, but in the test. Or X squared minus 16 over X minus 3. Okay? So same procedure, get the vertical asymptote of this one. So the vertical asymptote is 3. Okay? So it's a vertical asymptote. So to grab that, so 1, 2, 3. Now, to determine the uh, slant asymptote, okay, you need to use the long division method. Are you familiar with long division method? Okay, so you need to do, you need to look, uh, you need to come up with that one. So magiging uh, x squared plus zero x, since there is no in between, uh, plus six minus sixteen divided by x minus three. Okay, x minus three. So if you apply that long division, so your answer will become x plus three. Okay, x plus three with the remainder. So your x plus three, you need to use it to determine the uh, points. So magiging linear, it will become linear. Okay, it will become linear. So that's that. That's a slant asymptote or oblique abs asymptote. So to determine the slant asymptote, use the uh, long division method. Okay, long division method. Ah, uh, I think no, maybe naman. There's something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yun. Okay. But of course, you need to know how do we determine the slant asymptote. Okay. In determining again, in determining the slant asymptote, you need to use the long division method. Okay, long division method. 